a little bit on the history of separation technologies. And we're not going to focus that much into how these processes were developed, but it, this is just an overview of the history of some important separation technologies. And as you can imagine, the first processes were done for food. You can imagine this guy right here obtaining this uh, honeycomb of bee with a lot of honey. And well, you need to extract or remove the honey. So maybe they did this by filtration or maceration. Remember, maceration is nothing more than destroying the solid carcasses and removing the liquid part. So kind of uh, a little bit like a filtration, but this is mostly focuses on essentially just removing the solids. And there are a lot of processes involving uh, separation technologies in food, but the important things I want to focus are extracting ores, perfumes, dyes, evaporation of seawater in order to produce sea salt. Remember, I don't know if you know about this, but salaries or the concept of salary comes from the concept of how sometimes in medieval or ancient times, actually, the salt was used as a payment. So sea salt was kind of expensive and sea salt or salt per se was used as an exchange commodity, as money and distillation of liquors. So talking about that, we have some cases on pre-Hispanic America, uh, mezcal and tequila, man, one of my favorite drinks. They are nothing more than a separation of the juices of some uh, plants, or let's say cacti, and technically speaking, the agave, blue agave. They removed the liquids and those liquids were actually containing some fruit or let's say sugary material, but instead of just drink it for the sake of calories, what they did is boil it, separate it into a much more concentrated beverage. What they see is that the alcohol content made them feel a little bit funny. And that's how distillation came to be in pre-Hispanic America. Actually, you can find a lot of uh, distillate materials or beverages in a lot of cultures because this is a very important process in cultures. Talking about that, Middle East and Arabia, they produce the so-called alembic, which comes from alembic. And this is nothing more than a very fancy or more, uh, let's say, prepared unit operation for distillation. So what they did here is, okay, they set up a base. Then you have the pot, which contains the material, let's say halfway. And what they did is, of course, a material which will allow conduction of heat, typically copper or other brass, maybe other materials and the addition of heat talking about energy separating agents. So they added heat, the volatile material goes first away. And what you end up is obtaining a distillate, typically rich in volatile material and the bottoms or leftovers, which is typically uh, containing a high amount of non-volatile material. Then eventually came Europe into the picture, what they did is a lot of uh, processes, also more commonly distillation, extraction, uh, maceration, filtration, a lot of other processes were more formally added to the actual experimentation or scientific community. As you can see here, a lot of glassware was starting to become uh, relevant for the chemists. And that's how they eventually started to the formal education or analysis of separation technologies. Now, I think that the main boom on engineering processes, separation technologies is the industrial revolution. Back then, this was very, let's say, craftsman or artisanal way. You needed one person to operate this. So as you can see here, you need a lot of people working in this little factory. But the industrial revolution came to change this by the use of automatization and machines. So these started to be working on modern processes such as the steam uh, machine. And of course you need energy to produce steam, which was a main form of mechanical and thermical machine. So what you will see is that the kerosene needs and oil such as petroleum or coal started to become of more importance and 
the industrial revolution came to change this becoming or selecting oil as the most important commodity for energy production and not only that as we pass through the ages well not ages but decades you will see that oil is not only important for energy sources but also for petrochemicals such as polymers such as other uh, materials related for these uh, let's say kerosene jet fuels what else we have here uh, tire material and so on so this is what i wanted to show you guys essentially a very quick overview on separation technologies uh, i don't want to show you already the modern applications but as you can imagine these applications are still being done but in a more industrial and educated way